Up next, I have a dual 1019 in the worst condition I have seen. I kid you not, I spent more time on this piece of crap to get it working. Like, I could probably count the things that weren't wrong with it more than the things that were. It was absolutely ridiculous. This thing belonged in the junk pile. I don't know why I took this one on as a challenge, but uh, let's get started. This time I have a turntable. What have we got? It's a dual 1019. First things first, let's remove the cartridge to prevent any damage to it. We'll just take a look at the stylus on here, make sure it's not damaged. This is how it came to me. WD-40 warning. You've been warned. This has had WD-40 on it. A lot of WD-40 and it shows. It is an absolute disaster as you'll see shortly. I should have just thrown this one in the garbage. Brand of his cartridge. It's a Stanton, it looks like. Stanton 500 Mark II. Okay, so that uh, status looks okay from my vantage point. I don't know what's wrong with this turntable. I guess I will find out when I plug it in. For starters, this one came in without a power cord. That should be the first warning that this is going to be a disaster. Got the line outputs here, the, the, the phono outputs. I can plug my amplifier directly into that and I'll clip power on. I want to see whether this unit actually works. So I've got my... No, it doesn't work and it doesn't look like it's worked for an awful long time. Phono inputs and for testing I can connect it to my cheater cord just alligator clips and of course this will go on the the dim bulb tester so that if anything falls off and shorts out I won't uh, end up with a shocking experience and um, then we'll plug it in well it's not turning for starters if I turn it manually the mechanism works but this is jammed so mechanisms jammed on this one so we'll take it apart and see why it's not working i got the control unjammed but when i switch that to manual it should start turning it's not so got a problem another thing is the record stacker shaft won't go all the way into place it won't fit all the way down there's a little pin on here that goes into a slot and it will not go all the way down. First things first, I'm going to remove it from the base. I don't even know whose turntable this is. I think this one was given to me. This might be mine. I know where it came from, but I forget whether the guy wanted it fixed or whether he was just giving me this thing. Note the time when I started on this unit, like 5.30, Saturday night. I didn't finish it until Sunday afternoon. Heavy, that's for sure. Jesus, this is heavy. This this uh, mechanism is really heavy. One of the heaviest mechanisms I've picked up in a long time. It's like the wooden base weighs nothing. The mechanism itself weighs around 30 pounds, 20 pounds anyway. That thing's at least 20 pounds. Good old Bluetooth speakers are good for supports, and yes. They are Bluetooth speakers. I have two of them, brand new ones. Never been used. I should really sell some of this stuff because I got all this all this stuff sent. You know, I did an evaluation on this years ago. Got two of them. You can run them as in stereo. You can run them as a stereo speaker or as two mono speakers, one for the left and one for the right, and make separate separated stereo. Never use them. I just use these things as supports for turntables. Okay, this is the switch. It seems to be jammed. Okay. There, I don't know what was jamming it, but that appeared to be jammed, but now it seems to be free. Now, will it move when I pick up the arm? Will the arm engage it? Or is this one... This one might not engage the arm, actually. This one might be... Well, it should. When you pick up the arm, it should engage this. Some of them you push the manual button to do it. I think this one you have to push manual. 
and then when you pull the arm back, it releases. Ah, okay. So this way, you flip it to manual, and that turns this, that pulls this out and turns on the motor. And when when you pick the arm up and bring the arm back, you'll see it, it releases the catch here, and that stops it. So that was stuck. So that, maybe that's why the motor wasn't turning on. I'll reconnect power and see if the motor turns on because it didn't turn on before. I'm dying in here today. It is 33 degrees according to the thermometer up on the wall. And it's not that hot outside today. But the reason it's so hot in here is I've got this big Sony LCD TV going here. And that thing throws off a tremendous amount of heat. Like I thought my plasma set threw off a lot of heat. My gosh, this thing throws off more heat. I can feel it. I can feel the heat coming off this TV that I'm testing that's sitting behind me. Okay, does this motor turn? Hmm. It doesn't seem like it's turning. But I don't see any I don't see any light on the dim bulb. Like I would expect to see some light coming from the dim bulb like when I short it. Oh. It's got it's got connection just not drawing enough current to turn the light at all but the motor does not appear to be rotating hmm I wonder if the switch is any good gotta get that motor turning first of the motor shot then nothing else really matters right got a fan going overhead But that TV is generating a lot of uh, a lot of heat. Oh man, that turn that bladder is just that thing weighs a ton. This would be good for low wow and flutter. See, neat thing about this turntable is that it's uh, the motor seized. <laughs> That's what the neat thing about this turntable is, which is actually not a good thing. I don't know if I'm going to be able to unstick that motor or not. That's the next thing to try. We'll pull the motor out. And see whether the motor can be unstuck. Is this, work, is this working? This is a four speed 16, 33, 45, and 78. So I'm going to remove the motor, this quarter inch on these. Of course, not. It won't be a quarter inch, it's going to be metric. So it's a seven millimeter socket that will seized up on real tight or corroded. So I have to comment here, that sheen that you see, that's WD-40. Some moron sprayed a can of WD-40 in this machine. I was basically signing the death warrant for an old duel like this. Of course, the one I want to get is impossible to get to with the idler tire in the way. That means I gotta pull the idler tire to uh, probably to get that one out of there. To dig out the clip. Now I can get in here with the seven millimeter socket. I'm surprised that the rubber is any good on here because it's been sprayed with some type of a lubricant. Like it's everywhere, it's on everything. You can see it. Somebody just got in there with the WD 40, I think, and just let fly. Anyway, there's the motor that's disconnected now because it's completely seized, it won't turn. Although now I can probably take it apart without having to probably take this apart without having to um, disconnect it. Let's see if I can get it to unstick. Depending on where the bearings are seized, just two screws hold this one together.
<laughs> Don't let it come apart. Let's see if we can tap it. I don't want to tap too hard on this because I don't want to damage the, the cone there. So what we'll do is we'll take the cone off. Then I can hit, uh, hit the uh, shaft a little harder to try to break it through. Even that doesn't want to come off. It's going to be held in place with one screw. But it's been on here so long that uh, it does not want to lift off. There we go. All right, now I can use some brute force. You can hit this thing a little harder and see if it'll get a little release. This is um, rusted, as you can see. You can see the, the cover here has been rusted to the, the actual core. Of course, now I've freed the motor up. I think I've separated it a bit. Let's see if I can get this thing completely apart. It's now turning freely. Got to get a hammer and give it a little bit of a tap. Back side of the motor came off. Those go through there like that. See if we can pull the see if we can pull the rotor through. It's all it's all gummed up. You can see corrosion in here, right? uses as a punch to punch the rotor through. Oh yeah, yeah. Beauty! Look at the bearings. All stuck. So, I don't know if these will be savable or not, but I'm going to get my, uh, I'm going to get some oil in there and clean this up and oil this bearing and see whether it'll come back to life. doesn't look to be badly scored. It looks like it's just gummed up. The lubricant dried up in it is what it looks like. So I may be able to resurrect this one, but let me go grab some cleaner and uh, we'll get a Q-tip in there and clean out that crud and then I'll get some oil and then we'll see where that motor will go back together and work. Fingers crossed that's all that I need to do on this one. And of course the rest of the mechanism. Crap. So it's got some isopropanol on a Q-tip clean out the bearing itself and the base and of course the motor shaft After extensive cleaning, I've got most of that crap off of the bearing, off, off of the shaft, and the bearing itself is should be clean. So let's grab some oil, and we'll throw some oil down into the bearing itself, and see how the motor spins once I get it back together. Good old three-in-one electric motor oil. We'll throw a bunch of it down into the bearing here, and it should soak into the the felt pad that's around the, the bearing to help lubricate it over time. Now that's turning nice and freely now. Put this together. 
going to be the harder part getting this back together just because of the, uh, I'll just try putting the screws through first. That way maybe I can line it up a little bit easier. Align the screws in the holes and then set the, the rotor in, in place. good old hammer to tap it back together. I'm not putting much force on this by the way. Very light. Just enough to seat it. Let's see if we can get the screws through. That one's through and that one's going through as well. And this spins. So that's a good sign. Get the motor remounted and see if the if the uh, platter will spin. And if so, then we're well on our way to resurrecting another old German-made duel. As far as the power cord goes, I don't have the original cord, but it's not too difficult. I could just solder some wires onto the the. Uh, bottom of that clip there and make it a hardwired connection. As I say, I, I forget whether the guy said I could keep this or not. He brought me a bunch of stuff. Um, a couple of those Grundig radios that you saw um, in the previous oh, oh, week or a couple weeks back. It was a fellow that I gave the little silver tone to and he brought me, I've still got one in the other, in the other uh, garage. It's just too big to bring into here right now. Got to clear some space. But it's a big console he'd like me to look at. But he brought me the one that had the broken tuning uh, clutch assembly. And uh, I sent him away with that one. And the one with the power transformer that was uh, bad. Uh, he took that one back too. It's, it's not like he wants to spend a lot of money. And anyway, he had. There's a, I got another radio of his, a table radio old table radio and this and he and he already had one turntable I already picked up one turntable that that oddball I think was an Italian made one that was fixed that was another one of his turntables so he's already got that one okay this is spinning nice and freely now but I don't remember whether he said he wanted this one back or whether this one was just here take this thing off my hands it's probably about there I pulled a big plot Clive moment there, stabbed myself. All right, oh, look at all the grease that's on the bottom of this thing. I, I, as I say, it's it's it's, uh, it's an oil refinery. It, this looks like WD-40. It's all it's all turned to like wax. This is why you don't put WD-40 in this lubricant. It's not really a lubricant. It will um, gum things up. It's okay to use it to get something going, but uh, once you've uh, unstuck something that you've put it on, you wash it off and put a proper oil or lubricant on. Don't leave that stuff in there because it's not going to do any good. It's going to ruin things. Get our motor back in. Oh, that's disgusting. Look at all that grease, all the oil. Literally someone sprayed a half a can of WD-40 in this thing. That's just the start of the problems. I'm going to put the idler tire on here and just see where it lines up for the speed. So I've got the idler tire on now. I'm just looking at uh, where it lines up and we're right at the very edge here. I think I have to bring the, the spindle up just a little bit so that I'm more in the center. When the pitch control is centered. Let's 
So I just got to drop the motor down again and bring this up a couple of millimeters. I'm just looking at where the tire rides as I turn the pitch control. And I want it to ride in the center when it's in the middle for the different speeds. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I think we're okay. So I'm going to reattach the motor, put the, the three nuts back on to hold the motor in place. I tell you, whoever worked on this, it's exactly how you should not work on one of these duels. Just you do not take them and spray them with WD-40. You take them apart and lubricate them properly and clean off what's on the uh, idler shaft. I got, I got grease or oil, WD-40, all over my hands here. You can see it just from touching this thing. It's just disgusting. Put some oil down here onto the bearing. It's a little better. And put the clip back on. Soak up the excess. We don't want it flying all over the place once the thing starts up. Actually, I think this is a different shaft. This is for a different model. I believe the one on this, it pushed it straight up. It, it, it just pushes straight up on it. If we watch the way the gear turns here, you'll see that this just pushes straight up like that. See? It pushes up to drop the record. And then it releases it back again and I'm right again this is the correct one for this style you notice what it does it just pushes up so if I put this one in this is for mine this was not going on this one it goes in and it turns like that now when the gear operates you'll see the record spindle will will drop I could probably throw the, this, this the uh, platter on for this I'll throw some oil onto here And I can throw the platter on to go through the motions here because this is going to be fine. Oh, this platter is so heavy. I can't get over how heavy this platter is. Like this thing just weighs an absolute ton. Okay, so now you'll see. They see the catches remove. They go up. Then they drop back down. Let's try it out up power and see if it spins okay let's just see if I put it to auto or turn it to start will it start turning yes uh, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere oh there it's starting to pick up speed now well let's put a cartridge on it and see if it plays tunes That part works. I don't know about the manual part, whether that's going to work or not, but uh, let's certainly, let's try the cartridge and see whether we get any sound out of it. That doesn't look too healthy down there. Actually, this doesn't even look, no, it doesn't look right. It looks like it's bent. The cartridge itself just doesn't look, oh, it doesn't look straight. It looks like it's twisted. That's because it is just, twisted. Maybe it's just from where I'm sitting. But uh, anyway, let's see if we get any music out of this stupid thing. I guess the moment of truth. Why did it stop?
Well, it's not staying turned on. There's something, something gummed up still. But let me just pull the switch manually here. Where the hell's the switch? Is it this one? There we go. Let's see if it's going to go the right speed. Yeah. That part works. Stop. Man, that lifts up high. That's because it's a stacker. I love how these cartridges don't, don't look square. When I put this to manual, it should start up, but it's not. It's not pulling the switch over enough unless I pull the switch manually, but if I pull the switch manually, it's uh, it works. Let's check the pitch control. Let's just see how accurate the speed is. Gee, it's pretty good, eh? That was by ear. I have uh, pretty close to perfect pitch. As you can see, I dialed that in by ear. And I'm exactly 33.3. Oh, gotta like it. So speed is correct. Um, of course, it's got the wrong spindle on it, which is what's going to have to stay because I'm not putting the spindle from my 1214 on there. Actually, it's my son's 1214, he kind of commandeered it for me. So this has got the wrong spindle. We got to got to get it to work where it'll start when I push it to manual, because right now it's not starting. That's just something that's gummed up. So let's uh, ungum it. I'll take the cartridge off again to prevent damage and then I'll ungum this mechanism and see if I can make it work it's come on and stay on when you hit the power button to manual when you flip the lever to manual to start it it pulls back on this lever here this is the start lever but what's happening is it's not pulling this lever far enough it needs to pull it down to here so this lever when I'm pushing it is not pushing this far enough I'm just gonna pull this piece apart you take a look underneath the, at the cone underneath it. It's all bloody gummed up with WD-40. Whoever uses WD-40 on these things should be taken out back and beaten within an inch of their life for how dare they put WD-40 on a turntable like this. I got it all. Ugh, it's disgusting. This is what this is the piece I'm talking about. This is what pushes up against this lever here, and this lever here is what ultimately turns on the switch. Pushes that over. We're gonna clean up this mess that's on the uh, control cams here. Clean up this crap that somebody sprayed in there, and. Uh, unstick some parts whoever sprayed this thing with WD-40 did a good job just getting everything just gummed up everything is just just sticky Still sticking just a little bit. It's probably right down here too.
on off this plastic insert for um, a, wa a wall anchor might just have to do the job uh, where's it here manual I guess I have to do that and then it will mm. Okay, we gotta work on that still, but we're getting there. Recleaning this mechanism again. Make sure it's completely spotless and get every last trace of lubricant that's could be sticking this mechanism back. This is the adjustment cam here that adjusts the position. It almost looks like this is bent, you know, but I don't know what someone else did before I got my hands on this. As I say, this unit I I think it's mine. The guy that brought it to me said, like, you know, here, you can see if you can make this work. I don't want it. I could be wrong, but anyway, I'm just going to get every last little bit of any old lube in here out because something is making it stick. I'm going to pull this core out of here now and just make sure that there's nothing on here that's, that's gummed up. I mean, this this moves pretty free, but I want to take this apart and just take a look underneath this core, this mounting post that just screws into the chassis. I'll clean that up too. Another Q-tip in there and clean that piece up. I mean, that's doesn't stick. Move the arm out of the way here. Let's try it now. I cleaned up the some grease that was underneath this side of the catch. Latch on. Still sticking. See? I bet it's under here. I bet it's underneath under here. I bet you there's some I bet you there's some lube or grease. Oh yeah. So say when this thing got sprayed down with the uh, WD-40, it got just everywhere. So you gotta clean every surface that it that every that parts can touch that can get this sticky foul mess like this is it here right anything that 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 any part can touch is going to create a surface that it can stick with and you got to clean everything okay so on off there that's a little better Ah, it's a lot better. Let's uh, put the the uh, mechanism back together and see whether it will function any better this time. A little better. That goes on like that, and then there's a spacer that goes between the two of them. Spacer.
spacer goes like that. And then the screw goes in next. And somehow attaches this all together. I think it's going to work now. Watch the latch down here. So when I push it to manual, it latches. And then when I bring the arm back, it drops back. Latches, drops back. So see, I've used WD-40 on turntables to unstick the, the bearings when they've been glued together from you know, years of sitting around. But I also wash it out when I'm done and put proper put proper oil in there after I'm done because otherwise it just it just leaves this ridiculous sticky mess behind that it's just going to do nothing but cause trouble down the road and if you don't get it all out the problem is it could drip back in right like any any stuff that's on the chassis I'm going to pull the, the platter off again because I want to make sure that I get all of it off the, the top of the chassis so that it doesn't drip back in here again Otherwise, I'm going to be right back in the same boat with this mechanism sticking. I've had the unit apart several times, but I'm going to have to take it apart yet again. i got to get under this because this appears to be where it's sticking is right down here. Right under here is where it's sticking. There's got to be some gunk. The only way I'm going to get that out of there is to actually take this whole mechanism apart yet again so we'll do that one more time try to get the last of the gunk out move that screw move this piece That piece. You got to remove this bracket too. Remove the pin. And of course the washer. And see if I can get under this piece. I'm gonna have to lift off I guess this bracket to get under here. And this bracket. Because it's right under here is where the where I think the sticking is happening.
that's how it's supposed to be. But it, it, it keeps slipping. It keeps jamming. If I can keep it working like this, without jamming, see now it's starting to stick again. It seems like I clean it up and it only works a few times and it starts to bind again. Now we're sticking. Oh, there we go. See, that should that should snap all the way down like that. Goes in like that, and then this sits in place like this. Still doesn't want to push it all the way. I push it up a little more, the latch. Maybe this screw is out of adjustment just a, just a bit here. Uh, this effect, but not not really. It's affected by how far this pushes it here. I think this lever here, underneath here, has still got a bit of a. It looks like it's been bent a little bit. That's what it looks like. It looks like there's a bit of a, a bit of a bow to this lever. That's how it's supposed to operate, right? When you when you engage manual, this should operate and lock into place like that. That's what holds the power on. And then when you bring the tone arm back to the resting position, the tone arm here will trip it and shut it off. That's how it's supposed to work. When you engage it for auto, auto does the same thing. It turns it on. As the tables, as the gear turns, the gear will release this catch which will pop that lever back. And it seems to be moving a little better now 
then I've basically removed all the lubricant, all the grease, and all the gummed up WD-40 that just seems to keep migrating back onto this unit. Every time I turn around, it's gummed up again. I mean, I've cleaned this multiple times throughout this process. And this is one of the things a lot of people don't realize about these old dual turntables. They think, oh, you got to put a lot of grease on them. Actually, less grease is better. You basically only need to grease the this area here to make sure that that's not sticking. This lever and uh, sometimes some grease in the track here. And that's really all it needs. You, you want very, very little. This is the queuing arm. And you really want very little anywhere else, just on a couple of the pivot points. Because uh, excess lubricant will dry out. And that's the biggest faults with these units over the years is that the lubricant dries out on them. Or people get in there and, and with the grease and put way too much in. That's the most common problem I see with these units is someone's gone in there with the grease gun and just lubed everything like crazy. They don't need it. They need very little. Preferably none on any of these parts. <laughs> right? If you're going to put some lube on there very, very sparingly because, and don't start bending things uh, because uh, it's just going to cause headaches. These are very old units, you know, these are 50 years old, a lot of these, these turntables. At the time when these were new, I know people praise these units these days. I don't, they don't deserve the praise they get, believe me. They're not that great, but as a mechanical changer, they're kind of cool. Although this one here is not going to be a mechanical changer because it has the wrong spindle for it. But um, anyway, let's try it again and see if I get any success so I can get this thing off my bench and move on to something else. All right, first I'll try it for manual operation. Move the tone arm in, flip it to manual. At least it's running. If I flip it to stop, it should stop and this should return to here if everything's working right now that was supposed to kick back why didn't it when the lever goes around that should should drop back like that when I put it to auto to start this should start it and this lever should drop back. Is it going to drop back or is it going to stick? No, oh, I'm in 10 inch record position. This should kick back. It's sticking. What else is wrong with the stupid thing? It's just going to pick the record up over and over again. This is stuck. Again. Jesus. Ridiculous. Beginning to hate this stupid turntable. Yeah, okay, I'll just pull that off. This is supposed to move back like that. It's sticking yet again. What else is wrong with it? Again, let's observe the gears. When I flip it to auto start, and the turntable starts to rotate. The gears pull up. And this is supposed to be struck by, there's a lever here that strikes it. And it does. But it's not pushing it far enough. To, or this is not being released, why? Why is it not releasing? It's, it's, it's in the release position. But that stupid thing is sticking yet again. As the cam gear rotates, this pin pushes this lever, and that is supposed to drop back. But of course, it's going to do it now. But when I turn it over, and it's under the weight of the unit, oh, there, see, it didn't move. 
this is still sticking. I wonder if it's on the top side here. I wonder if there's some, like there's, I wonder if it's gummed up. I guess I can take out the screws that hold the uh, cover plate in place and see whether it's something on, something is sticking this lever. And it's been cleaned and cleaned and cleaned and cleaned. And it's still sticking. It's driving me absolutely crazy. I mean, if we look at the bearing here, it's, it's clean. Pull this apart again here one more time. Pick this off. Right? You've got these two pieces, and there's this bearing in between here. And this has all been cleaned up. Like, this is all clean. This is clean. That bearing is clean. Unless the underside of this is sticking somewhere in here. I'm just going to give that another clean with the alcohol. I've got the, the button top off of it here so I can try to get underneath this thing and clean any crap out that might be in here. It's, it's, it's something in this sticking. It's got to be right in here. There's still dirt coming off of it, even though I've cleaned this probably five times. Once again, back together with the lightest amount of oil on it possible. It should work. We'll try it again. I think the problem is this lever is bent. It's sticking. If I push it over, like when I operate this thing upside down, it seems to be free. But as soon as it's got it's turned the right way up, it won't release unless I put my finger on here and push it. Watch, it'll just sit there. It should, it should release now, but it's not. Now, if I put my finger on here, right? You'll see it'll it'll click over right at the end of the cycle. It'll drop over, which is what it's supposed to do. I can see the mechanism move down below, but this lever does not move. But I guess what I need to do is just give it a bit of a bend, give it a bit of a twist down here, and give it a bit of a little more clearance so it's not touching the the uh, it's touching the base is what's happening. And when I have it upside down, it seems to work okay. But when it's right side up, it sticks. Oh, power's come off. Let's try it again. Is this going to reset this time when it finishes the loading cycle? Fingers crossed, it's going to. Yes! All right, that's what it's supposed to do. That's what it was with that arm it was bent. Okay, that's uh put the cartridge on it, throw a record on it, and see if it's going to work. As I say, this one's frustrating me because it's been, it's, it's, it's been so much work. And then, and then looking at this cartridge, like this doesn't even look like it's in straight. It looks, it, it looks like it's going down at an angle. I don't know, maybe it's just the way these duels sit. It just, the arm doesn't look straight. But maybe that's just the way they sit. Not my favorite. It's not even set on this yet. It doesn't look straight, the arm. Maybe that's why the cartridge isn't in right. That might explain why I'm not getting any sound. Okay, let's try that again. 
Still doesn't look straight, but at least it should drop onto the record. When it gets to the end of the record, what's it going to do? Is it going to pick up like it's supposed to? Might help if I set the counterweight properly and so forth. Okay, so now that should stop. Let's just let's just uh, set the counterweight because this is like this is set for zero grams now. But oh, yeah. Okay, that's another problem with it. Uh, I didn't even notice that. Say the counterweight's missing. What else is new? No wonder this thing's weighing a ton. <laughs> oh man. Counterweight missing, wrong spindle. Oh, this was just an exercise in disaster just to make this mechanism work. Now, in order to make this stupid turntable work, I'm going to have to find something to stick on the back of there to counterweight. I didn't even notice that, you know. Pieces missing off the stupid thing. Someone's stolen the counterweight. It screws into the back here. Okay, so I don't have a counterweight. I didn't even notice that was missing because I really wasn't paying attention to that part of the turntable. I was more concerned about making the thing turn. But we got to come up with a solution because obviously having 20 grams of weight on the stylus isn't going to be any good for it. And I think I've come up with a, an elegant solution. We'll call this the Franken table. We're going to make the counterweight. Got a nice big bolt and a whole bunch of washers and a nut. We'll just uh, assemble all these washers together. and see how close we can get this thing to balancing. I bet you I can get it pretty close. I'll just start out with it, this initial pile of washers right now. I don't know whether I've got too many or not enough, but we gotta start somewhere, so let's just put all these washers on. I'm trying to go for the, the bigger ones to go to the back. And then we'll put a couple of these washers on too or nuts I guess just we just need some weight on here go with these other ones this other one first it's a little bit bigger that one and then the smaller ones and then a couple spacers and then I've got a nut that goes on top so that I can screw it down and tighten it up so that they don't rattle and we'll put this into the back of the tone arm and we'll just see if we are going to get anywhere close to this thing floating off the, off the, you know what? We're, we're, we're close, even at that. Maybe another couple ones on there, but even at that, that's, that's pretty close to being balanced. You know, I mean, it's, it's obviously not, it's not floating, maybe another washer on here but that's pretty darn close let's just try that we'll, we'll call that close to being balanced and I'll set the I'll set this for just under two grams and then we probably have around two grams of of weight on the stylus well, how this thing goes up like two inches off the record and of course it's going to drop it and miss the record. And there's an adjustment for that. I think that's it over here. There should be a screw to adjust where it drops. Okay, well that part works. Let's just try adjusting it so that it'll drop on the record. All right, let's try this. works let's put it over to the end and 
that should pick up right about now. Ah, good. And it should stop. I think my uh, Franken table is working. There we go. I'll go get a 10 inch 78 and we'll, we'll try that one. So that works. Let's hit stop. This turntable was a lot more work than I ever imagined it would be. I knew it was in sad shape, but I have to say that this was probably in the worst shape of any duel that I've ever seen. You know, all because some bonehead got in there with the Canon WD-40 and created a lot more headaches than we needed to uh, create on this one. Let me try a 78. Hmm. We'll switch that up to 78 and we'll switch the size to a 10 inch record and I just want to observe what it's doing and be here to grab it just in case it misses the record because this is going to drop over pretty quick is it going to get it? yeah it did, good make sure yeah good, yeah it drops onto the record properly oops well, did that stick again? Actually, it doesn't sound bad for that cartridge. That 78 doesn't sound bad at all. Oh, honey, baby, I'm It's working! Let's check the speed out of this. I'm just gonna, now that I'm all done, I'm gonna check the speed one final time on all three, all four speeds on this one. We'll start out in the 16 RPM. I'll just put it in manual. Remember, there is a pitch control. This is just where I kind of eared it in before. Actually, this is, I've had it apart several times. So 33.3. Should be 16.6 or so. 45. 78. Not bad. Shall we check the wow and flutter on this? I think that's probably not a bad idea, so we'll just stop it. I'll set it down to 33 and we'll do the we'll do the test on this one so it says start and it says start your turntable okay we'll measure the wound flutter it may surprise you how good this one may be because this has got a very heavy platter so for a rim drive turntable this is a really good turntable and it's actually now that it's working it's might surprise you how good it really is. So here's our wild and flutter. 0.15%. The speed went to a maximum of 33 point, uh, from 33.3 to 33.43. That's pretty good. We'll try it again. We'll try it at 16. Okay, I was measuring. Our wow and flutter is 0.39 on this one. We'll try it again on 45. Again, I, I haven't set the speed exact, but we're more looking for the, uh, whoops, got to have the arm in position for that. Won't start if it's over the 
the stop position there. If I, if I get my speed right down to 45. Seventy-eight. Amazing. I'm right on seventy-eight. Zero point zero three percent is the wow. You don't measure flutter on turntable. Obviously, they don't flutter. That's something that's exclusive to tape. It's wow on a turntable. Flutter on a cassette deck. Tapes don't wow. They only flutter. Well, they'd only wow if you really had a big problem with maybe a servo-controlled motor that's out of lock and it's drifting up and down the speed at a low rate. But tapes typically will flutter because of the small capstan shaft that's spinning. But that's uh, that's pretty good. 0.03%. Let's just, uh, I'll, I'll do this again. We'll see if we can get the 33 speed exactly on 33.3. .3. Well, it should be pretty close to it right now. There it is. We'll start. Point one one percent. Wow. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, I think uh, that's about uh, all we can do on this one for the Franken table. I'm gonna leave the little short plastic stem on there. I don't need the auto changer because, say, the one that's on there, the, the cover the guy gave me this thing with. Look at the cover. So someone obviously they put that long. They cut a hole in the in the top cover for it to protrude through, and then proceeded to cover this with like a vinyl wrap. It's got a hole in it though as well. But that's what someone did to this turntable. It's like, are you kidding? It covers worth probably fifty bucks. It was in good shape until someone cut a hole in it. Probably didn't have much in the way of scratches in it either. But that's the way it is. It's working. Not much more I can do on this one. It's now fully functional. It was a lot of work. But we saved another one. Thanks for watching.